Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. I am so excited to be in the house of the Lord. And I'm so excited for our audience on today that God has a word for you on today. And this word is an ever-changing word. This is a word, a processing word. This is a word from the living God. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for this word in the name of Jesus. He is so awesome. And the title of this message, as you heard earlier, if any man be in Christ. So what it's saying to us is that if any man be in Christ, then there's benefits, there's multiple benefits for you who are a believer uh, to receive Christ. And once you receive Christ and you're in Christ, then there's multiple benefits for you. And if we're in Christ, then we cannot be seen. When we're in Christ, we are protected. When we are in Christ, we have everything uh, that pertains to life and godliness. And in Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 12 through 19, it talks about Adam and how Adam was over the human race and how Adam acted in behalf of all of us. We were all in Adam, but when Adam sinned, and uh, he sinned against the commandment of God, and that made all of us sin. And so his punishment was death. So therefore, all of us, because we were in Adam, were sentenced to death. And the people sinned even before there was a law because Moses had not come with the law. And the people who, who sinned, they sinned, but they were not punished because of the law because the law had not come then. But everyone died from Adam to Moses. And Adam is a representative or was a representative of Christ. He was symbolic of Christ. He is called the first Adam and, and, and Christ is called the second Adam. And Christ was yet to come. But there's a big difference between Adam's sin and God's gift. The sin of one man caused a whole world to fall. Whereas the gift of God, which was forgiveness for that fall, caused many to be brought to the man, Jesus Christ, the second Adam. And so God, God uh, uh, made us right by sending his son, Jesus. And when Jesus died on the cross, we became the righteousness of God when we receive him as our Lord and Savior. And all who receive the gift of righteousness, all the believers live in victory. In other words, we have power over sin and death through Christ Jesus. Adam's sin brought condemnation to all of us. But Christ's gift of righteousness made us have a right relationship with God himself. All of us have new life because we're the any man that's in Christ Jesus. So when you're the any man that's in Christ Jesus, even though one person disobeyed God, one person obeyed God and he made all of us righteous because he obeyed God. And so the, 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 uh, 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 Jesus dying on the cross was more of a gain for us than Adam sinning against God. Praise God. Hebrews 2 and 4, it says that through death, he, talking about Christ, may destroy him, the devil, that the power over death, that is of the devil. So the devil had power over death. And the Lord came to destroy him. That's why Jesus Christ came from heaven, uh, 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 didn't think of himself as one who, who, who uh, had all this authority, uh, uh, how, where he came from and how much power and how much authority. But he came down and he laid down himself and became a mere man so that he could relate to all of us. And so he who knew no sin, the Bible said, came down to become sin. He came down to serve. Praise God. And so Jesus is the man uh, that died and rose again to destroy the devil's power in the earth. Praise God. Because, because we are human and we're made of flesh and blood, Jesus had to become human and, 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 and with flesh and blood in order to stand in our stead. By dying, Jesus could defeat the power of the devil because the, de the devil had the power of death. And so he showed Satan that he has more power 
over death than Satan has over death. So it took what? It took death to destroy death. Christ's death and resurrection freed us from the fear of dying. Death is defeated. Death is the doorway for us to have continuous life. Continuous life. And so when, when, when Christ died, he defeated death. And that death was the doorway for us to have eternal life. And so when we, and, and if you're separated from God, we can't see the way that God wants us to see. When we're separated from God, we're going to always live from earth to heaven. When we're separated from God, we don't understand that we can as sin and de sin to obtain spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus at any time. Because when any man is in Christ Jesus, there's benefits for them. We have the right to stand before God. The Bible said that we can go before the king of glory. We can go before the throne of glory boldly and, and seek mercy and grace in the time that we need it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man... If any man be in Christ, or if any man is saved, or if any man is a believer, he is a new creature. It, the Bible said that old things are past. They're gone, and they're never expected to return again. Uh, behold, all things have become new. So if any man is in Christ Jesus, behold, all things have become new. And so I have these gloves, and, 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 and I'm in a man. And so these gloves are, are, are symbolic of Christ. So I'm going to put Christ on, and I want to be in a man that's in Christ Jesus. So my hand is me, but the white glove is Jesus. And so me being in a man in Christ Jesus, I have to realize that I am saved. I'm any man that's in Christ Jesus, I have to realize that I'm a new creature and old things have passed away. Even though I feel like they have not passed away, as long as I'm in Christ Jesus, I am a new creation. And so if any man, which is me, is in Christ Jesus, I understand that those things are gone away and they're never expected to return again. When I'm in Christ Jesus, I I have to realize that behold all things have become new it does not matter how I feel how I look what happened what it looked like is broke down messed up thrown out it still become new because I'm in Christ Jesus and so as I'm long as I'm in Christ Jesus it reminds me that my old life has gone away a new life has begun because I'm in Christ Jesus and this means because I belong to Christ I have become a new person. It does not matter what you think I'm new, but when I'm in Christ Jesus, it's let me know that I am new. When I look and I don't see my own self, but I see, I, I, I see Jesus, I'm in Christ Jesus. And so it does not matter what you think because as long as I'm in Christ Jesus, I live and I move and I have my being in Christ Jesus. And so uh, uh, this mean that because I belong to Christ I am a new creation I receive this DNA it doesn't matter what you think I'm like my mom or my dad but I have the DNA of Christ and I receive it when I got saved all of my old messed up genes have been regenerated and so I am in Christ Jesus because Christ had no sin in him therefore I have no sin in me because I'm in Christ Jesus Jesus. See, if you look at it, I'm still in Christ Jesus. I may go mess up somewhere, but I'm still in Christ Jesus. And so as long as you know I'm in Christ Jesus, or you don't know I'm in Christ Jesus, I know I'm in Christ Jesus. I don't have to prove to you I'm in Christ Jesus. My salvation proved to me that I'm in Christ Jesus because I have no sin in me. See, what Satan does not want us to know is that when we receive 
receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have no sin in us. And see, that's why Satan always trying to Satan is always trying to tempt us with the old way of living. The Bible said he's the only oracle, oracle of the brethren, or he's the only accuser of the brethren. He's before the throne of God, and he accuses me in day and night. But it does not matter because he's trying to tip me with old stuff that was washed away when I became in Christ Jesus. And so he's always bringing up my path because he's mad that I'm in Christ Jesus. He doesn't want me to be in Christ Jesus. He keep my old past life in front of my face. He's telling me what I used to do. But he has nothing to do with my future. Amen. He does this to prevent us from God's rest. See, the Bible said that there's a rest to uh, God's people. And so Satan has a, a, a rest that he wants us to have. And so is him orating or is him telling us all the time. He's always speaking to us. And so God wants us to rest from Satan's oration or Satan's speech or Satan speaking to us. And once we begin to combine God's rest, which is available to us because we're in Christ Jesus, but we know that there's no other voice we hear because Jesus is our shepherd and another voice we won't hear. And we began to rest upon God's voice or God's restoration or God's oration or God speaking to us. Amen. Satan does not want us to know that we are regenerated. He does not want us to know that we are not in the sin anymore. I don't care if you go in sin. That's why you have an advocate. Jesus is up there. He's the, he's the chief intercessor. He's prophesying. He's praying. He's crying out to God about you. But Satan is around the corner and he's in the front of the throne of God. Look at them. Look at them. They messed up. They just received you. They just cut somebody out. They got drunk. They smoked dope. They did all this kind of stuff. But guess what? If any man is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So guess what? You're in Christ Jesus. The regenerated us know that we do not sin because it is Christ in us. He is the hope of glory. So amen. When we have not just turned over a new life, new leaf in life, what we're looking at, you know, People can look at you and they say, oh, she didn't turn over a new leaf in life. No, sir. I'm in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's not a new leaf in life. Praise God. But I'm in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit gives us new life when we are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit shows us new things when we are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit creates divine life for us when we are in Christ Jesus. And then, you know, we may not feel like we're saved. We may not act like we'll say but the bible said that you were saved or delivered you're being saved or delivered and you shall be saved or delivered and so what it was saying your spiritual walk of being in christ jesus is a process even though you want it to go real fast you want to run i mean that's the plans that you have for yourself so when you're in christ jesus we began to allow him to uh, direct our path and we lean not to our own understanding and we know that Romans 8 began to take over that all things work together for good of those that love God and call according to his purpose I don't care if the devil have forceps in trying to abort the seed of God in your life all things work together for good of those that love God and call according to his purpose because why you're in Christ Jesus and so it's a progressive change and you began a new life with a new master sin has no more dominion over you Satan is not your master and see what we have to realize is that we have a, 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 a permanent change and when you have a permanent change that change is deep and so things began to happen on the inside it may not necessarily manifest itself on the outside and see the thing is is that whether you believe it or not you're going to show some sign 
may not be the biggest sign you want to see, but you are going to show some sign. Second Corinthians 5 and 21, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God. Lord, mercy, Jesus Christ. What did that say? For he made him who didn't even know nothing about sin to become sin so that I could be the righteousness. Did you not hear me? Did I not say he who knew no sin, he who never sinned, he didn't know nothing about sin. Sin has no dominion over here, over him, but he became sin. He made, he became sin. He became the offering of sin for me in exchange from me. Amen. And so God allows sin to be placed upon Christ so that you and I can receive salvation. So we can get up and brag and say, I'm the if I'm the any man that's in Christ Jesus. And so you're the any man that's in Christ Jesus. I don't care how I look, you're still in Christ Jesus. I don't care if you cuss somebody out, you're still in Christ Jesus because you're the any man that's in Christ Jesus and so what God did was allow Jesus to change the sin life on the cross for crucifixion and he died on the cross for you and I so that we can have a permanent deposit of being the righteousness of God did you not hear what I'm saying you are being in Christ Jesus is a permanent deposit of the righteousness of God in your life and so God traded our sin and he made us right with God hallelujah and when he made us right with God there's nothing more valuable on earth things on earth are immeasurable when he traded our sin uh, and, and gave us the righteousness of God Colossians 1 and 13 says God delivered us from the power of darkness <laughs> God delivered us from the kingdom of darkness God delivered us out of the power of darkness and he just didn't deliver us but he translated us he transformed us he moved us he shifted us hallelujah not only did he shift us he reassigned us he allocated us to the kingdom of his dear son you that's just, you didn't just get moved out of the kingdom of darkness but you had a position you had to shift you had to move you had to relocate you know why because if any man is in Christ Jesus you cannot stay with the way that the kingdom of darkness work hallelujah because in a man is in Christ Jesus and so God rescued us from the kingdom of darkness God saved us he freed us he released us from the kingdom of darkness and then he translated us he converted us into the kingdom of his dear son we are set free when we come when we were translated or moved to the kingdom of his dear son that we were set free from the power of death in in other words, he took us off death row. Glory to God. When he took you out of the kingdom of darkness, he took you off a of death row. He took you where they could not say that you were guilty again. Because when they look at you, oh, we cannot sentence him again. This man is in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why? Because he's in Christ Jesus. It's not him that live, but it's Christ that lives on the inside of him. And so we are set free from the power of darkness. And so the kingdom of darkness, uh, uh, we were moved into the more abundant life in Jesus Christ. And so the kingdom of darkness, what he moved us out was Satan's realm of oppression. He moved us out of Satan's realm of burdens. And, 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 and then when we was in the kingdom of darkness, we were tormented spiritually we were tormented physically
physically. We were tormented emotionally. And we were tormented mentally with all kind of troubles. And I'm telling you something. Folks are going through all kind of troubles. But when you're in Christ Jesus, the peace of God, because you're in Christ Jesus, will keep your heart and your mind. Your heart will not fail you. You won't go crazy in your mind because you're in Christ Jesus. And why is that? Because if any man be in Christ Jesus, you have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. He shall keep your heart. You won't go crazy. Even if you try, you can't go crazy. Even if you try to cry, tears won't even show up. Why? Because if any man is in Christ Jesus. You're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so Paul explained to the believers. He said you are transformed from darkness to light. You were transformed from being a slave to being free. You were transformed from being guilty to be forgiven. You were transformed from lies to truth. You were transformed from deceptive to reality. You were transformed from the natural realm to the spiritual realm. You were transformed from from being an earthly being to being a heavenly being. Hallelujah. You were transformed out of the abundance of the power and authority of Satan into the abundance and the power of Christ. You have a new master. When you're in Christ Jesus, you have a new master. Hallelujah. You adjoin yourself to him. Why? Because you're in Christ Jesus. He controls everything. Sin has no more dominion on you hallelujah praise God Romans 6 1 through 2 what shall we say then in other words what you're talking about what you want to say about all the stuff that I just now said <laughs> oh glory to God what do you have to say what do you have to say about what I just said do you want to continue in sin that grace may abound God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin? How is it that you who are dead to sin go back and mess with sin again? If you do that, you don't understand the death of Jesus Christ. He gave you and made you a free will agent. If you want to go dibble dabble into sin, you don't understand the magnitude of the death of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so he was saying here, it, uh, will you keep on sinning so that God can show you more and more grace? Of course not. Paul was forceful with that thing. Why well, know what a terrible thought to think. And so what he's saying, if you're dead to sin, how are you going to keep living in sin? How is it if you're dead to something, you go back and mess with the dead? Why do they take folks and bury them in the ground? Because you ain't got nothing else to do with them. Hallelujah. You can go mess with them if you want to. You're going to end up having some kind of infection. You're going to have some kind of disease. And that's what it was saying. You keep messing with sin. And what happened is that it began to permeate and so what it was saying don't mess with sin because you were delivered from sin sin has no more dominion over you anymore so if you saying since God loved to forgive why not just give him more to forgive since forgiveness is guaranteed is this freedom for me to continue to sin in other words what an attitude to have deciding ahead of time that we're going to take advantage of God and so this, in this, in this indicates that we don't understand the seriousness of sin. We don't understand how Jesus came from heaven and came on cross and made himself a mere man and suffered uh, like we did here on earth. And so that he can relate to us. And he who knew no sin became sin, hung on the cross for us. And they stuck him in his head with these thorns that were 16 inches long. And they beat him in his back. And he was a bloody mess. And they stabbed him in his feet with those nails and in his hand. And they hung him to the cross. You don't understand the seriousness of sin if you think that you can go back and mess with sin again. You don't understand the seriousness of you being saved if you think you can go back and do it again and so Jesus did this he paid the price and so what you don't understand because you yourself 
did not hang on the cross. You yourself didn't bleed all the blood almost out of your body. You yourself didn't have to get beaten and spit on and everything else. And so you have to ask the Lord, since I'm in Christ Jesus, let me understand what you went to when you was on the cross so that I can take the seriousness of sin. Hallelujah. Before we were, the Bible says in Ephesians, before we were dead in sin, before we were dead in sin. A while back, we were dead in sin. But now we are dead to sin. So the bottom line is we are dead to sin. And so in the past, you were spiritually dead because of disobedience, because of sin. And we fought against God. And so what it was saying, how can we go back and mess with something that we are dead to? How is it that we should, should, should live with sin any longer and we're dead to it? Why would we go and dibble dally with something that we're dead to? And so Paul was looking at this thing. He was saying, this thing is unthinkable for me to go back and sin. And I've been delivered from sin. Why would I go back and sin? Why would I go back and play with matches and know that I'm going to get burned? And so certainly this is not a strong, he, when he said this is a strong phrase, in other words, he said, you perish that thought. You let that thing die. Do away with that notion. And so how shall we who died to sin live any longer in sin? In other words, when we are born again and we believe on Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our relationship is permanently changed. We died to the body of sin. In other words, sin got a body. And, 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 and it's not mine because my body is in Christ Jesus. But why would I go back and pick up that old dead body and take it and haul it around with me? And it's a dead body because what happened back in the day, what they did when somebody killed somebody, what their punishment was, some of them, was they would have to take that dead body of the person that they killed attached to them and then they'll walk around with that dead body. But a rigor mortis, mortis, mortis begin to sit in. And so when it sit in, infection sit in disease set in and so the murderer begins to get killed by the murdered in other words and so what God is saying don't go back and mess with sin because sin is a murderer and you will end up getting killed by it hallelujah and so what God is telling us because you knew no sin just like I don't know sin because you're in me and so the bottom line is I was looking at something how is it that I have a dead body and I'm going to go back and live in that dead body. I'm going to go back and mess with that dead But that's just like, I, I, I was asking Lord, I said, Lord, give me something that folks can relate to. He said, you know what it is. I said, what is that, Lord? You got to tell me. He said, you know how it is. It's mostly women. You know, he said, what is, what, what, what is it? I said, well, what is it, Lord? He said, he said when, when they were 29, it was all right. But the bottom line is that they were 29 last year. And last year is all gone. And it will never return again. Last year, age 29 is dead. You will never see 29 again. No matter how much you want to be 29, you will never see it again. And so the Lord is saying, you're 30. And because you're 30, you walk in 30. You live in 30 and you be 30. Why would you go back and deal with something? Something that's old and that's already gone that's never going to return again hallelujah and so what it was saying why would you go back and, and and try to be the age that you used to be why would you go back and dibble down with something that you once were amen so what he was saying we're trying to pick up something that we once carried we once carried the age of 29 but we don't carry 29 anymore our past life we were spiritually dead due to what we were spiritually dead because of sin and disobedience and so how, how should we, who used to be dead in sin, but now dead to sin, we used to be dead in sin, but we are dead to sin now and live. How in the world can you live free in sin when you're dead to sin? We can't live, live free in sin and we are dead to sin. And so he, Paul loves this thing and he was just explaining everything to us. He's, he explained exactly what he meant by the word. Who died to sin? We who died to who died to sin? We who are in Christ Jesus. I 
I'm in Christ Jesus. So guess what? I died to sin. Like I said earlier, may not look like it, but I died to sin. I may not act like it, but I died to sin. I may not walk like it, talk like it, but I died to sin. Why? Because I'm a new creation and I'm in Christ Jesus. And old things have passed away. And behold, old things have become new. So guess what? I'm in Christ Jesus. And as long as I'm in Christ Jesus, I've been acquitted whether you think I should have been or not. I've been exonerated whether you think I should be or not. I've been vindicated whether you think I should be or not. I've been pardoned of my sin life whether you think I should be or not. I've been forgiven of my sin life whether you think I should have been forgiven or not. I've been delivered from the death sentence whether you think I should be or not. So guess what? I'm not going around here flirting with something I was delivered from. I'm not going and ask the judge you sure do to have any other witness. I'm not going and ask the judge can you go and look at the evidence that they threw out. I'm not going to ask the judge can you have the jury to reconvene. I'm not going and ask the judge to uh, consider the overwhelming evidence that was against me. I'm not going to ask the judge, what about those other witnesses that they wouldn't let testify? I am not going to flirt with something that I already been delivered from. And so you were delivered from death. You were exonerated from death. You were acquitted from death. Because the Bible says that Jesus said that you were not guilty. I don't care where your friend think you're guilty. I don't care if your mama or your daddy think you're guilty. Jesus said not guilty. He began to hit the gavel. He said not guilty. And the son who I set free is free indeed. And they will stay free as long as they know they're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 